Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss India's latest space launch, the GSLV Mark III. We have with us D. Raghunandan, who's been following these issues for News Click for quite some time. Raghu, good to have you with us. GSLV Mark III has been a major achievement because we have been talking about this in News Click and other places that India really needed a masculine launcher to be able to reach geostationary orbit with a satellite which is roughly about four tons or thereabouts, the minimum required today for really commercial space launches. Do you think that GSLV-3, GSLV Mark III makes India, puts India in this bracket? As you say, we've been uh, talking about this for several years now. Uh, through all the laudatory, self-congratulatory launches that India has done, uh, to Mars, to the moon, launching a hundred plus uh, micro satellites. All these were very nice uh, achievements. But uh, if India was to be taken seriously as a commercial space launch uh, nation, it needed to be able to launch heavy satellites, which were uh, meant for commercial uh, applications, particularly for communications satellites, which is where the money is and where the demand is, which meant launching satellites of about four tons plus uh, at high enough altitudes to uh, enable geostationary uh, positioning. positioning of the satellites. So this has been uh, a long time coming. But having reached there, I think it's been a milestone. What India now has to do is to have similar launches. Normally in the space uh, launch universe, uh, you are taken to have a reliable launch capability if the same launch vehicle repeats a success three to four times. So people would wait to see two to three successful launches of the GSLV Mark III, then I think we will start seeing commercial uh, interest being expel, uh, expressed in India's launch capability. Raghu, what is a cryogenic engine? There's a third stage is the cryogenic stage. So what's a cryogenic engine? Why is it in the third stage? The third stage is where you want the boost to take your uh, payload up uh, to a high enough uh, altitude and to position it correctly for geostationary uh, functions. So you need sufficient power. Uh, when you say geostationary, you mean fixed above a certain spot? Fixed on above Earth. a certain spot uh, on Earth. So that requires two sets of maneuvers. One is to position the spacecraft roughly on the equatorial uh, plane. Uh, only the Europeans, the Ariane, launch site in Guinea is virtually equatorial. Uh, Sri Harikota is not too far from the equator, but we still need to maneuver a satellite once you've launched it to get it on the equatorial uh, plane. And other is the position of the uh, uh, satellite, the height and the uh, so on. But this requires a fair amount of power. Now that power, if you're going to use solid uh, propellants, will require a very huge uh, weight uh, up in uh, space, which is why you decide to go for a liquid uh, uh, propellant, but at very low temperatures, so that you can store the fill and store the uh, fuel, and it will not uh, weigh too much. Uh, when you carry it up. And that is why the cryogenic engine has turned out to be important. Not that it is the only possible way of doing this. Why has the Indians uh, cryogenic stage, which really started in 1998 or thereabouts, of course, earlier work from 80s, why did it take about 19 years of time before India could stabilize? The first thing, of course, is that uh, it's not a particularly easy technology uh, to master. It was a tough one, and India for a long time thought it could uh, get this technology from the Soviet Union, and later from uh, Russia, and then either 
adapt from the technology or reverse engineer uh, it and develop the cryogenic stage. Uh, this started developing problems after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the transition uh, to Russia, which then started having a slightly different approach uh, to technology sharing with other countries. I think the relationship between Russia and India also started changing with India looking more to the West uh, for different technologies. All this posed a challenge. Raghu, uh, if we look at the background of this, yeah. it was the Yeltsin government which really buckled under the pressure of Clinton oh, that's right. uh, administration. That's right. And literally sabotaged that's what right. was an existing cryogenic agreement. That's right. Which was for peaceful purposes. That's right. As you know, uh, cryogenic engines are never used for missile purposes. Quite right. It takes three days to fill. Yes. So therefore, nobody is going to wait three days for a launch. Yeah. So the fact that it was a peaceful uh, transfer, it did not violate the what is called the missile uh, MTCR. MTCR, the control uh, regime. All this was really not the issue. The real issue was the Americans didn't want that's India right. to be a competition Absolutely. in space uh, commercial launch Absolutely. vehicles. So you're right. That's so why the, the basic, sabotage. Yeah. So the basic thing was a shift in the uh, geopolitical environment. And Russia. Which, and Russia changing its uh, uh, position and uh, once the Soviet Union or Russia, the successor regime earlier under Yeltsin finally gave way to the Putin regime, by that time I think it was too late because Putin's yeah. Russia started looking at technology transfer etc. in very different yeah, but that is already uh, too late. But by then have, it was too late. We have spent yeah. nine years trying so to So by that our time then India had uh, invested its time and money into developing its own uh, cryogenic engine. And that is, I think, of interest in the GSLV Mark III is that earlier variants of India's cryogenic engine, which it had been using in the GSLV Mark II, were derived from earlier Russian designs. This cryogenic engine uh, used in the GSLV Mark III is a completely indigenous uh, design, owes nothing to uh, the earlier Russian designs and is a completely new Indian design, which is, I think, what makes it uh, particularly significant. So what you're saying is that if you have two or three or more such launches, That's right. then India would be firmly into this That's right. communication space launch vehicle market. That's right. We have been launching our uh, communication satellites to Daryan route. That's, That's been right. the preferred platform for India. So who are the other uh, players in this field and how would India uh, be positioned yeah. with respect to both technology and cost? Yeah. Well, uh, the US, uh, the Europeans, mm -hmm. uh, the Russians and the Chinese have uh, such launch capabilities. Japan has launch capabilities, has never really established itself as an established player in the launch market, particularly in heavier uh, satellite launches. So we are essentially talking about four uh, players. NASA has virtually gone out of the uh, satellite launch business now. So it's left to players like Elon Musk and others to take the ball uh, forward. So they are playing in the market as well and Musk is playing for the uh, low cost market by shifting to reusable rockets thereby reducing uh, costs. So that's what his uh, game plan uh, is. So that leaves the Europeans and the Russians. The Chinese are not really global players in the commercial space launch uh, market. So I think India has a good slot uh, to enter into, there is sufficient demand in the market and not enough players. So if it can show reliability, what you're saying yeah. is in cost terms, India would get yes. an economic advantage yes. or a commercial advantage yes. because it really offers cheaper uh, right. launch costs. Right. The other part of it, do you see a shift po of possibility uh, towards smaller satellites, micro satellites and not going in for such big uh, large satellites so that you have more number of smaller satellites but you cover the earth similarly. Yeah. This is happening in different applications, uh, particularly in tracking uh, 
uh, applications. There are some of the satellites we launched in our earlier record-breaking 104 satellites uh, launch, for example, is a company which is uh, using microsatellites to track any uh, vehicle, ships, trucks, trains, whatever. So any courier, uh, cargo carrier, anybody can track exactly where their uh, cargo is going, whether it's on land, sea, air, uh, whatever. And they do that by having a hundred or more microsatellites all around the earth rather than having one large satellite uh, tracking it. So for some of these applications, this works. But uh, the difficulty is in communication satellite, where you want your communication satellite positioned just so. And those communication satellites with the transponders and so on tend to be heavy, which is why there is still a premium on the four ton uh, class. Because for example, about 10 years ago, you would have had communication satellites in the 1 ton or 1.5 ton range. But now people want with a single launch to have a much larger number of transponders uh, up because then you can hire out the transponders uh, to other users. So communication satellites today tend to be of the 4 ton plus range. In fact, many of them are today 6 tons. And there is one other aspect which has been highlighted in sections of the Indian media and in the international media, whose utility and potential, I think we should discuss at some other time, but which we can flag here at the moment is, with this, India has opened the door to the possibility of human uh, launches as well. Uh, we could not have attempted to put an astronaut in space until you had this size of launch capability and uh, apparently ISRO has already uh, put forward a proposal to the government uh, looking for a uh, human uh, launch about eight years down the road. Uh, and I think maybe at some future date, we can discuss the pros and cons uh, yeah. of this. The third stage being That's lower right. in weight if you use a That's cryogenic right. That's right. fuel. And cryogenic means, of course, very low temperature. Very low temperature. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us. This is all the time we have today for News Click. Keep watching News Click, both our YouTube channel and the website.